Um, there is a, so we have a mix of MA students and fourth years uh, with us today. Uh, I'd say there'll be a few uh, joining in and out um, as, as we talk as well. So look, I'm delighted to have Jackie Hurley uh, join us today. Um, she doesn't need much introduction to, 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 to most of you, but uh, maybe our inter international students um, it, it, uh, may, may not recognize her immediately. So Jackie's established herself as one of the, the best known voices and faces in RT sports in uh, just a few short years. Uh, she rose very quickly, really, <laughs> um, after a stint in the US and actually our, our own Live 95 in Limerick uh, for, for a period. And I think there was a few other stops in the way before RT as well, wasn't there, Jackie? Yeah. But, um, but she might get into those uh, uh, later. Um, she took over RT's flagship show, um, Sunday Sport on Radio 1 in 2009, um, as the first ever female anchor in the show's history. Um, uh, so that's the absolute go-to um, radio show for for, uh, for sports. Um, so that, that that was a very big deal at the time, and it remains a very big deal. Um, so she she uh, she anchored the the the, the World Cup for TTV and uh, like presents the sport in the six one among uh, numerous other. Uh, 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 she's everywhere in RT basically <laughs> at the moment, and uh, and is also a, a, f a fantastic and um, very strong advocate for better representation of, of of women in sport and in sports broadcasting and in broadcasting in in, in general and sports participation and things like that. So Jackie's talking to us today as a, as a sports broadcaster, but just also as just a, a terrific broadcaster in general. And she's going to be, um, so a, a, again, I, I, a good few of the people joining us today, Jackie, yeah, they, 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 they might not necessarily be sports oriented. So it's there, there, there will be loads here for, for anyone in terms of presenting for TV and making good TV packages. So that's, uh, and, and whatever else takes her fancy. So. Um, so again, there'll be time at the end for questions. So um, hands up if you've got a question, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if you've got a question, turn, uh, put the hand up, and, and put the camera on as well. It's kind of just nice to be able to uh, look at who we're speaking to. So, um, Jackie, I, I've got you spotlighted on the the, the team. So, um, if yeah, when the slides are on, I'll I'll switch over and back. Okay. So perfect. So thanks, thanks very much for joining us today, Jackie. Thanks a million. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, look, in normal times, I'd love to be down there with you. Like that was kind of the plan when me and Fergal spoke about this um, last year. It was kind of the idea that I'd get down a little bit more and we do a bit more hands on stuff. Sadly, that obviously just isn't possible at the moment. But look, the one thing that I would say is feel free to reach out or if there's stuff today that you're particularly interested in or or anything like that, like, you know, Fergal has my details. Um, there's no never any harm in dropping me an email or reaching out to me on social or anything like that. So, um, you know, feel that we're just kind of here to try to help. And so like what I'm going to do today is just sort of just do like some basics, some tips, but really just kind of walking you through um, like what I have kind of found has worked for me. For some of you, it might be different. But look, you know, like I said, if there is points where you want to jump in and ask a question, do. Um, I'm going to try and show you some slides. I'll have a look at a video as well from last night from a package from last night's TV news, just to give you an idea about the kind of things that really work on TV. And then like that, let's just have a chat and uh, and see where we go. So um, hopefully you can all see the screen. Basically, this is the kind of the idea of what I'm going to go over. So it'll be like, what makes a good TV package? Like Fergal said, how to use your voice correctly? Because this is something that a lot of people really struggle with. It's like, how do I find the range that really works for me? And then using it in the right way. So we'll have a look at a bit of that. And then lastly, the PTC, the piece to camera. How do you deliver that on camera uh, when you're doing that re for reporting? And then like laterally for TV reporting, if that's something that some of you guys want to do as well. So here's some of the basic fundamentals that I have always stood by. In RT, and I'm going to show you our running order and all that in a little while, but most packages are a minute and a half to two minutes. As one of my old lecturers used to say, if you can't say it a minute, don't bother saying it because it's one of those, you know, ideas that you need to be able to get to the point very quickly. So even when you look at our running orders in a while, even the COVID numbers packages now are two minutes tops. Like we probably in a, in a like the 6-1 news is a bit different because there's a few live interviews in there and whatever. But if you watch the nine o'clock news at night, all of the packages are less than two 
two minutes because it's just bang, 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 the news of the day. And I would generally say if you are looking to RTE and you're looking to get a grasp of where is the best stuff, the nine o'clock news is actually a really good example of where the best reporting is. And in a lot of ways, it's actually because it's probably the third time people have had a go at it. Like if something is broken at 11 o'clock in the morning, then they're trying to get something quickly onto the one o'clock news. By the time the six o'clock news comes around, there's lots of stuff happening. There might be a live insert. Things might get squeezed. By the time it gets to nine o'clock, it's really, really a good chance for people to have had a good long look at the story and to really get it right. So if you are looking at... Um, just examples of where there's some really good reporting, I would recommend that you watch either the Virgin Media News at eight o'clock at night or the RTE nine o'clock news, because that is generally where you get a lot of the really good reporting. But aiming for 90 seconds to two minutes in all of your reports is exactly what you should be doing. Script for the ear. Now, this is really like if you are in the kitchen, like not everybody is watching the news all the time. Sometimes people are like half listening to it. They're not catching all the pictures. So you can't really just write and expect that people have also seen it. And also, crucially, with broadcasting, people only get one chance to, he to hear it or to see it. You know, like I know you can say, oh, I can rewind. But generally, people don't do that with news. It's like a one take offering. So by writing short sentences, that are really easy for people to consume, that just makes it so much easier for everybody. So scripting for the year is actually really, really important. And it's not something that comes naturally because usually when you're writing, I'm sure a lot of you are probably, English might be a really good fundamental subject of yours. You're used to writing like very nice linguistic pieces, but actually for broadcasting, I have found that the simpler, the better. So instead of using really, really long sentences about how this man ended up on this journey, it's pretty simple to just go, this man ended up on this journey, full stop. Next sentence, full stop. Nice short sentences that are scripted for the year are really, really easy to consume. When you can get the chance to write to pictures, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of this in, in some of the packages, but like sometimes like something happens and you get an opportunity to, to use that picture. So I'll show you in a minute, but when you're looking at your rushes, if you see something, try to find a way of incorporating it. So if it's like, let's say somebody wins the lotto and there is, uh, the cameraman just gets this great picture of them laughing together and they're sharing, the, they have the check. It's like, you know, you, that phrase like laughing all the way to the bank or, you know, something like that. But it's like using your pictures to give you a line in your script that really, really works. And it might sound cliched, but like sometimes that's actually what news broadcasting is all about. It's like finding that killer line that really works, but finding the right pictures to match what you're saying can really, really work when it comes to that instances. Same thing with using natural sound. Like if you're out there and you just happen to hear like kids laughing or birds singing or, you know, a firework going off. Like if it happens, try to use it because like it really breaks up the piece as well. And there's really natural points to use it where let's just say you start off your your package and you've got a, a line, then you've got an interview clip. Before you move on to kind of the middle section, there's a lovely little interlude there where you can use your nat sound to pick up that point in your uh, package. And it's lovely, it works really, really well. I'll show you in, the, in a package that I'm gonna show you in a minute, Column uses it really well, and it's just a nice little breaker. So if there is that sound and it can enhance your story, take every opportunity to use it because it's a nice breaker for you as well so that people aren't just listening to your voice for that solid two minutes either. Um, and then the last one, fact check. Like you would be so surprised the amount of times where people just take it for granted that, oh yeah, that is right. And then you haven't actually gone to the effort of checking it. And then something goes to air and you're like, oh, balls. Now, trust me, I have done this. Like loads of people have done this where something just accidentally, you missed it, you got a digit wrong, you got a year wrong, you got somebody's name wrong. You know, in so I work in a, a pod of four. So you probably know some of these people, Ivan Lee Quillen, Eamon Horan, and Paul O'Flynn all work with me. So the four of us always work together. We work on a seven day fortnight. And then the shift opposite us is Claire McNamara, Joe Stack, Dave Kelly, and Justin Tracy. And so we would always work in tandem. And what we would generally do is check each other's work. So I might pop a script into iNews, and I'll say, Paul, will you have a quick look at that for me? And he will. And it's just maybe staying on top of each other so we know that 
we fact check this and it's absolutely right before we put something to air. I know it sounds really simple, but lads, it is really, really important because people are coming to you to know that you've given them the right news. So uh, doing that is, is crucially important. So this is how I kind of go about constructing a package that just makes it really, really simple. First thing I always do is watch my interviews, choose the best clips. Again, you do your interview, you're talking to the person and Johnny says something brilliant and you think you're going to use that. And then you go back and you watch it and you realize, oh, he, he was a bit clunky and he didn't say it how I wanted him to say it. He might have said something really nice in his first answer and really nice in his third answer. And it's just deciphering, can I shove them together? Can I get what I want and whatever? So watching the interviews and choosing it is the best. Rather than deciding in your mind, it has to be that. It's just a really good discipline to get in because you might have missed something as well. He might have said something that you just went over your head, you were listening out for something else and you went gung ho for that when actually the best bit could be there. So finding the best bit, always watch your interviews right through just to make sure in case you've missed out on something. Looking at your rushes, what stands out? So if it's like that, your cameraman got a beautiful sunset um, and you can use a line about a new horizon for Irish football or whatever it is, but look at your rushes and then find a way to match your words to your pictures because you, you could really surprise yourself. Sometimes your cameraman might have spotted something that you didn't spot. You could be chatting to your interviewee and the cameraman spots animals running through a field or children laughing or, you know, something that just breaks up your story. So when you get back to base, looking through your interviews and then having a look at your rushes, because you just never know what you have. And then it gives you an idea to look at it. Is there something that works for an upsound? Is it like a couple chatting together um, before you're doing the interview? Is they, they saying something? There was a lovely story on the news uh, last night. There was a couple got engaged. Um, out on the cliff top and there was a guy shot the footage with a drone and just while they were chatting to each other uh she said to him i think she was italian and she was like oh tmo tmo you know like i love you and uh the cameraman just caught it but jenny used it in her package then and like they weren't saying that to her but it was just she just happened to catch it on camera and it was lovely and she used it and it really really worked because again it really helped with the story and then last thing crucially this is like the fact checking thing i can't tell you how many times we have gotten back to base watched through everything went to edit the package and then at like five o'clock realized oh shit, we don't have that shot of x so let's just say uh, it's Ronan O'Gara from a sporting context. Ronan O'Gara's team, La Rochelle, are playing against Leinster and we were looking for a specific shot of Ronan O'Gara uh, doing something. And we think it's there and we've asked for it, but we haven't checked that it's there. And then later on, it's too late and you realise that you've built your whole package around this, you've scripted everything, you've gone and found this lovely line and then you realise, Jesus, I don't have the shot. So just checking into your bin and getting into the discipline of making sure, have I picked my right interviews? Have I looked at the rushes? Do I know what I have? And do I have everything that I need before I start my package? Because it could be too late by the time you go looking for something later on, and particularly in newsrooms where everybody is scrambling for the same thing. We have one library that look after news, current affairs and sport. And so at five o'clock in the evening, if I'm going ringing them and saying, here, can I get that shot of Ronan O'Gara playing in 2008? There is a good chance that they are going to tell me no in probably stronger language than that. So finding out early what you want and asking for it is a really, really good um, practice to just get into. Conventional news packages generally look like this. I know you guys have just done your uh, final sort of um, packages on this. So you, you guys have all done this this week, so you know what it looks like. But generally speaking, the world over, I've worked in America, I've lived in Australia. The same thing generally these principles are. Your opening line is sort of your really crucial, important information. Here's what's happening. The second line is giving the context to where you are. Generally, you've got an interview clip there or your Vox Pops, whatever is happening. Some sort of additional or interesting information for that kind of middle section there, whatever it might be. If it's, let's just say it's jobs, you know, it's it's the context of what it means to the area, some clips from people who are involved there, and then your PTC. It doesn't always go at the end, but I have found conventionally a lot of people do tend to put it at the end. And in most in most ways, it's actually because it's easy. Like it's probably the easier option to sign off with your piece to camera because it generally is that sort of rounding it off, 
this is this is the context of the story. This is what's most important. And then the sign off. I do like when piece cameras are in the middle because it kind of breaks it up a little bit as well. But conventionally speaking, even though our old news director didn't actually like pieces to camera at the end and he didn't like it finishing on just the person. That's why you would have you'd see a lot of the time now if you're watching the news, there might be a shot covering over. It might be like, let's say you're down at the Aviva Stadium. Instead of Tony O'Donoghue finishing on himself, it'll be a pan of the Aviva or whatever it is, just to break it up a little bit so that it's not finishing on person and cutting back to person in studio as well. But conventionally speaking, this linear approach is, is kind of what tends to work. And it's proven because like people... People are creatures of habit. That's what they know. They know what the news looks like. They know I'm going to get my information. I'm going to hear from Mary. Then I'm going to get more information. Then I'm going to hear from Mickey. And then I'm going to get my piece to camera. And that's kind of what works. So um, listen, in some cases, it's a case of uh, if it ain't broken, all that. Now, using your voice when it comes to packaging is probably one of the most important things. I don't know how much voice work you guys have done. And we can do a bit of chatting about this afterwards. But like trying to find how you make your voice work is really, really important here. The first thing, like I said, short, clear sentences. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to just break it down to the simplest form possible, because the worst thing that you can do is just ramble in a package and try to put in as much information. Like I did this when I started out is like, sometimes you want to show people that you know what you're talking about. And even when you're presenting as well, when you're asking a question, you can fall into that habit of trying to use all the information that you know in disseminating your question. And what actually happens is you confuse the listener and the viewer because you're throwing so much at them when all they want to know is, you know, in, in a sporting context, who won the match, who scored the goal and what does it mean? You know, and in a news context, it's very much, let's just say there is a job announcement. It's what are the jobs, where are they and what does it mean for the community? That's like, it's pretty simple. So short, clear sentences that just tell people specifically that really, really works. Read your script out loud to yourself. Again, it sounds really basic, but when you work in a newsroom, in most of the environments, it's an open plan setting. So like, let's just say right now, right, you're all practicing how to do reports. I'm sure you're probably all recording them in your bedroom or in your kitchen away from people, or you're trying to, you know, do it to yourself. When you're in a newsroom, you're in an open plan office. And if you make a balls of it, which happens all the time, there's lots of people around. So you need to really be able to get into the habit of when I'm banging out this voice report, I need it to be ready to go. And the best way to do that is to be prepared before you start recording. So if you read your script out loud to yourself when you're at your desk, you'll hear it. You'll know, does that sentence make sense? Does it sound okay? Is it clear and coherent? And by reading it out loud to yourself, it's a really good discipline to get into before you go and start recording. Because like, once you sit down and start recording, you know yourself, if you make a mistake the first time, you go again. But if you continuously keep making mistakes, you kind of start losing your confidence. And then you're like, oh, God, are people listening to me? Do I need to go in and take a break or whatever? Whereas if you actually break down all those mistakes before you sit down to record your voice, you'll be much more confident. Trust me, it'll make it so much easier for you. Finding your range is really, really important here. So I, as you hear, have a much lower register of a voice. It kind of, the studies have kind of found that finding the lower range of your voice is actually what people find easiest to use. And I don't know, again, like maybe this is back to the sort of male, female idea behind it in that news reading had generally been a sort of quite a, a male dominated atmosphere back in the day. And then people just became used to hearing that voice. So in a lot of senses, you'll hear women who have deeper voices broadcasting because maybe people have found that more palatable. I think for you guys, when you're trying to start out your career or develop your career in some cases, it's actually about finding what works for you, finding what's comfortable. In early on in my um, career, I had I had a problem with losing my voice and it was because I was speaking at too high a gauge and I wasn't taking enough of a beat. So I was kind of speaking too fast, too loud and not breathing properly. And then if I would go to a match or I'd be at an event where I'd have to speak louder, I found that instead of speaking into my diaphragm, I was speaking up out of the top end of my throat 
and I started getting a lot of throat issues and I went to a speech and language therapist and she really worked with me to start speaking out of the lower range and to really speak from my diaphragm. And if you listen to me probably in 2007 or eight, I have a much slower um, range and pace now than I would have then. And it's probably you can you can actually hear a difference now because it's just the work that I've done just because, again, it's a very long career. Well, I hope it's a long career that I don't get the bullet any day soon. But it's actually like trying to find something that really works, that is going to stand to you over the test of time. If you ever watch Reeling in the Years, like it's on obviously now and they're doing it much more recent years. But like if you listen back to over some of them, like listen to Jarrah Canning or Jimmy McGee or Brian Dobson, you can hear their voices and the way that they have lasted over time. Yes, they have changed a little bit, but you can still hear the register is there. So finding your range is really, really important. See what works for you. And like listening to yourself and talking with your, your peers is really important there. Do they like the sound of your voice? Can you develop it anymore? Finding your range is, is hugely important. Clear your throat before you start speaking. Again, lads, this sounds really, really basic, but like, there's nothing worse than that sound of like, you know, where you kind of feel like you need to cough and you're saying the words and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's grand, but it's not. Like you get one chance to get it and get it clear. So just make sure before you sit down, you've had a drink of water, you clear your throat, you feel confident, you know that you're ready to go and then you do it because there's a good chance you're going to get that um, better off from the first go. And lastly on this one, using your voice, go slow, okay? I cannot tell you how many times at the start of my career I thought I was speaking at the right pace until my bosses were like, just listen back to this. You are absolutely lashing through that bulletin. I used to read radio bulletins when I started out. And in your head, you think you're going really slow, but you're not. So a good habit that I got into is for every time that you read, take a second slower and you'll hear it but you'll think you're sounding the same, but just take a beat, take an extra breath and add one second onto every sentence. Just slow it down even by one single second and you'll notice the difference. And what it'll stop you doing as well is tripping up over your words because you're actually controlling your breathing. It's not, you're not reading slower, you're actually just controlling your breathing better. So by taking one extra second to read your sentence, you will, it'll be a game changer for you, but you just really need to be diligent with the, with the habit of it. The piece to camera is the one thing that I think a lot of people find hardest to nail when you're starting out because you don't want to be overconfident. You don't want to be underconfident. Am I projecting the right body language? It's all of these things. So getting the piece to camera right is hugely important. One thing that I would say is save a key fact or a piece of interesting information for it. If you watch the news, the amount of time where people are just waffling in the piece to camera is has decreased massively in the last year because our boss had a huge problem with people just coming on and just basically in a sporting context saying the match is still on. And people don't want that. People want to know, like, what? give me some information here. So by keeping something that's important, you know, like, let's just say it is a, a jobs, you know, it's it's actually telling people you know, this is what it's going to mean in 10 years time for here or, or whatever it is. Or if it's like in a football context, somebody has been sacked. It's like this is we're going to move it forward here with the piece to camera. This is who they're looking for. This is what's likely to happen. And this is what's coming next. And by having that piece of information, there's a purpose to your piece to camera, because otherwise it's just you popping up on camera and you don't really want to be getting into the habit of just popping up and saying nothing because I'm not saying people will remember that, but you'll remember that. You want to feel like there's a significance to what you're doing. So having something interesting to say is, is the best place to start. Generally, keeping the PTC to kind of two to three sentences, 20 seconds max. If you're doing a if you're doing a whole package and the whole thing is only a minute and a half and a third of that is you, there's something wrong with that balance. So it needs to be, particularly if you've got like two interview clips and the two interview clips are probably 20 seconds each and then there's 30 seconds of you, try to scale that back and find the balance whereby you're just the storyteller and not the story. So by keeping it to kind of two, three sentences, just contextualizing, here's what the story is and, and get out. 20 seconds is generally a good one to, to aim for. Um, and the last one on the piece to camera, shoot it somewhere relevant, like popping up just in a green space that has nothing to do with the story 
it just doesn't help. Like for, in our circumstances, we'd always try to find creative ways to get there. So let's just say we can't get into the Aviva Stadium every day because Martin Murphy, the stadium director, has better things to be doing than opening the stadium for us every day. But we have found a really nice bridge down in um, kind of the back end of Sandy Mount. I'm sure if any of you watch the news, you definitely know where I'm talking about. Tony O'Donoghue who was live there last night. But we basically go to the bridge and shoot it because you can see the Aviva in the background. And Tony can still say, well, here at the Aviva Stadium, people know he's not obviously in the Aviva Stadium, but like they recognize that that's the Aviva Stadium behind him. Same in Croke Park or same with the news. If it's like, you know, there's something happening down at the M50. If you are within the vicinity of it and you can see it off in the background, people accept that. So find your relevant location and go there. Don't just pop up doing a piece to camera for the sake of it. And if you are going to do that, I would suggest just drop it. You know, in some circumstances, if you watch the news, there's lots of pieces that there is no piece to camera. And that's fine too, because it's not always relevant. But if you are going to do it and you're going to go to the effort of putting yourself on camera, make sure that you cover all, cover yourself in the best light by going to the right place and saying the right thing. Being comfortable on camera when you're doing that is another really important part of this. I have a couple of hacks that I use that might be helpful for you. Maybe they won't be, but I'll, I'll walk through them and, and hopefully you might get something out of them. The first one is I like to say, I like to call it talk to the living, not the lens, right? Some people get really put off when they look at a camera lens because you don't, you, you can't really control your body. You, like you're sort of, what's my body language saying? There's not somebody looking at me, you know, am I looking directly at the camera? You, like you can just be a little bit put off by it. But actually think about it this way. If I was talking to you directly and I was having a conversation with you across the way and I was trying to say, um, such and such and such has happened and this is what it means, you'd actually do it in a very meaningful way. It would be quite conversational. And actually that's what TV reporting has become. It's become more conversational over the years because that's how people are digesting their news. A lot of it is down to social media as well. Like, you know, I think everything on social media has become so conversational that that has drifted into mainstream media as well. So break it down. When you're doing your piece to camera, try not to come off that you're you know, trying to spout like and, and inform a nation. You're actually just trying to tell your friend. This is what it means. So do it that way. Talking to the living, forget about it being a camera. Just talk to the camera as if it was your friend, if as if it was a person who you were just trying to give them the correct information and just do it that way. And what it'll allow you to do is to just relax a small bit. Cause like there's nothing worse. And like there's there are plenty of people um you know, who, ju who just aren't comfortable on camera. And like, I, I understand that, but trying to make it that you are as relaxed as possible is by viewing what is coming at you as what you're seeing. So like if you're sitting in the living room and you're chatting about the story, what are you like then? How do you articulate your feelings? So trying to do it that way is really, really important. The three C's, this is something that I have been doing since I was about 20. Um, this is just something that I came up with when I was working in America. So it's like confidence, care and charisma, my three C's that I always live by. So the first one is just being confident. And that is actually everything from the way that you present yourself, actually just like standing up properly, keeping your shoulders back, keeping your head up and looking directly at the camera because people can really pick up on body language. If they think that you're sort of slumped down and you're, you know, kind of meagerly giving them the news, there is a trust element where people want to see you standing up there. Like, do you ever watch um, Michal Lehan, the political reporter? He just stands up and he just gives it straight down the barrel. And he's just like, OK, I'm delivering really bad news. But unfortunately, I have to tell you that this is what it is. It's actually just about sometimes the way you present yourself, that that's how people take the information from you. So having the confidence to stand up and know exactly what you're doing. So just do the check. Am, are my shoulders straight? Is my face up? Am I looking directly at the camera? And do I have a, a, you don't have to be smiling all the time, but like, do I have a face that is showing people that I know what I'm talking about and that I am presenting it in a way that is confident? The second one is care. And this is like taking care of what you look like. So I know that sounds really vain, but equally, if you've got hair blowing across your face, that's not a good look. You know, like I have been in situations where the cameramen have been like, here, fix your hair there or whatever, because you don't see that until you go back and you don't want to be going back 
to base having been shooting something down in Port Leash and it's an hour away and then you realise that the piece of camera that you shot is totally not usable. So just checking it there and then and knowing that you've taken the care of, is my appearance okay? And I don't have to be a, a film star, but I, you know, you need to be presentable in a way and also taking care in what you're saying. So have I fact checked it? Do I know that it's absolutely correct? And being able to stand over it, that's really important. And then the last one is charisma. And like, again, this is very hard to teach but I do think it's something that you can adapt because everybody has their own sort of aura, charisma. Everybody knows how they carry themselves. And it's just being able to kind of have that little bit of sense of who you are. So you might be really knowledgeable. Like you could, like history could be your thing. You might like to bring a bit of that in. Like you might be kind of quirky or funny. You might like one-liners, you know? So it's finding that charisma that sets you apart and then really honing in on it and being able to use it. So that's really important. And then the last one on this in terms of being comfortable is if there is an opportunity to smile or do something different, take it. Because with every story, like you could be doing a story today that is about somebody has been t murdered terribly and it could be a really horrendous story and that has to be treated with one element of care. The next day, it could be somebody has had a baby and like it's the first baby of the year and it could be a really beautiful story or somebody could be doing a charity fundraiser that has changed somebody's life. So it's actually finding the story and finding a way to be able to tell it. So if there's an opportunity to do something that's a bit different, like I don't know if any of you saw, but um, Samantha Library, uh, one of the RTE reporters, a couple of months back during the pandemic, there was a train that came off the tracks in Germany. I think it was Germany. So it was basically like the, the train was going overhead and it had kind of, it had fallen off and, but it had stayed there. And over the years, they were going to build it into a monument. And Samantha has small children and anybody here who has small children will know there's a writer called Julia Donaldson and she has a book called The Snail and the Whale. And so Samantha kind of rewrote the words to uh, a train so it was like you know I'm not telling it properly here but it was like basically like the, the train um, went off the rails and like it was all rhyming and it was really like rhyming couplets but it was really funny and it went viral it actually went viral all over Europe because loads of people had seen it and thought oh my god this is brilliant but it was just Samantha was a bored in a pandemic and b just saw an opportunity to do something a bit quirky and in her head she knew do you know what? Some people won't get this, but the people who get it will really, really appreciate it. And you would often see this with sport as well. Like, so just before the ad break, so the, the news, the 6-1 news is an hour long. It's 53 minutes. It's in three parts. The first part is generally very news heavy. It's at the moment, it's, you know, very COVID heavy. And maybe there's been some big news in the day. Part two is kind of getting into the kind of meat and the bones. There's an interview. There'll be some other news stories of the day. And then part three is where we come in to pop up and give everybody the fun stuff about sport. But just coming into the break, there's a teaser there that we always take an opportunity to do something silly with. And it might be just like finding a line that's like, for instance, this weekend, there's a an Irish gymnast in the European Championships and her name is Meg Ryan and we were immediately like Asher you have to do something about sleepless in Seattle or something so like you know it's it's like oh and sleepless in Switzerland Meg Ryan going for Olympic glory or whatever it is so it's like finding a way to do something slightly quirky that some people will really appreciate it might go completely over some people's heads but it does give you an opportunity to show a bit of your personality as well because one thing for all of you to remember is if you want to be in broadcast journalism sometimes it's going to be very serious but sometimes it's not and people get a very limited window to see who you are and what you are and giving them that chance to show them your personality just gives you an opportunity as well to broaden your horizons as well so that you're not always seen as very serious news person and like that would be something that I have tried to do over the years as well because in my real life I'm not serious at all but obviously in my news job I have to be incredibly serious so it's just trying to find the right thing that works and then and then sticking with that Lastly on this then, right, and I'm going to show you a package after this. These are my kind of five tips for how to make it. So for want of a better word, these are just things that I think you should try that will work for you. Always, always watch and listen back to yourself. This is a habit that you need to get into. I know it's not easy and I know sometimes you'll cringe and you'll be like, oh, I hate my voice or I hate the way I look or whatever. Trust me, you do not get over that. I still feel like that. I still listen back to myself and I'm like, oh, Jesus, I hate listening to myself. But I know it's a good habit. 
because I know that if I I asked too many questions or I jumped in there on him before he was finished or I didn't listen very well there or I was rushing to get to the full time whistle and I missed something, you know, listen to yourself is actually it's the best habit you can get into because that's where you pick up on your mistakes and you're going to know if I use a word all the time. I need to make a note of that and then I'm going to try and remove that. Like when I started out, I used to say absolutely all the time. Now I, I just made a note of it beside myself and I, I really try not to use that word anymore. And I have loads of others, lots of crushes, lots of mistakes that I still make. But by watching and listening to yourself, you will remove a lot of them. You won't remove all of them, but it's definitely a really, really good habit to get into. And it's the best one that I can recommend. The second one is practicing and writing your voice reports. I even think this is a good thing to do if you're watching the news, you see somebody taking an approach. Think about how you would have done it. So if there's a story about they're redeveloping your local village, how would you do that? If you've seen it on the news, this is the approach that they took. They talked to this person, this person, this person. These are the shots they got. What would you do? And continuously do that. Write, practice and voice them. And it'll actually get you into a really good habit of doing that. Get a kit. This is the third one. I mean, everybody can broadcast for themselves now. And I think we've all seen the way social media is going. Like you can use Filmic Pro, which is a brilliant app. It allows you to shoot at like standard quality, TV standard quality. There's a really good app called LumaFusion. You can edit on your mobile phone. That's a TV package ready to go. Brian O'Donovan even uses it in America. He puts himself live. Some of his reports are live on a mobile phone. So you can really do anything now with a mobile phone. And the one thing is having a mojo kit allows you the freedom to do your own stories. So if you are trying to break in, like oftentimes, let's say in RTE, we might struggle to get a crew to go to things. So like there could be six crews on in one day but three of them could be tied up with one story and then we come along in sport and because we're in the back end of the bulletin we can sometimes really struggle and we might be i wouldn't say that we're last in the pecking order but sometimes like if hard news comes we all have to accept there's bigger things than sport but actually having your own kit and some of us in our department shoot for ourselves so if it comes to it like me or paul or joe can run out and go and grab that and actually that makes a real difference, just being able to do it yourself. So being in control of your own destiny is a big one. You pick up a mojo kit for a couple of hundred quid. I'm sure you all already have smartphones. You get a tripod for maybe 150 quid and you can get one of the little um, phone pouches and they're really, really simple. I'm talking a couple of hundred euro and it could be a real game changer for you because it allows you to freelance for whoever you want as well. This is crucial. OK, there are going to be so many no's. Honest to God, I I interviewed for a job in Virgin Media. Uh, I didn't get it. It was TV3 at the time. I interviewed for a researcher position. My car actually broke down on the way. I ended up arriving into the interview, like literally covered in oil from the car, like walked in the door, thought I'd have a chance to nip into the bathroom. They were there waiting for me at the door. Like I it was just terrible. It was a really bad experience. I did a horrendous interview and actually it was funny because Debbie O'Donnell, who was the series producer at the time, uh, she moved on to Expose and she moved on to a few other things after that. But it was for our, to be a researcher on Ireland AM. And she actually said to me, she was like, I know you're talented. I can see that you have a talent. I just don't think you're you're right for this job, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you again and good luck. And it was a really nice thing. It was a no, but it made me kind of go, all right, OK, look, I wasn't right for that, but I'll be right for something else. And I applied for a job in Today FM to be a bulletin reader. I didn't even get an interview for that. Um, so like sometimes you have to be able to go, OK, I wasn't right for that, but that doesn't mean that I'm not right for this job. It's just about finding the right one for you, because like, you know, as Fergal said, I used to work in Live 95 and I had done my internship in America and I had been on air over there and like started out as an intern in the newsroom and like pretty much did everything. I like ran the ticker along the bottom of the news. I had run auto queue. I had run cameras in studio. I literally learned how to do everything so that when I came back, I'd be able to be available for whatever work was there. But when I went into Live 95, the only job they had was the shadow crew driving the Jeeps. And the guy who was in charge of the station was like, God, you probably don't want this. And I was like, I will literally do anything. And he was like, OK, like brilliant. And what he really liked was that even though it probably wasn't the job I wanted, I was willing to do it. And I think the one thing that I would say in terms of advice for all of you is take whatever job is there. You might feel that, oh, God, I'm 
not above this, but you might feel like, oh God, I wish it paid better or I wish there was more opportunity. The best place to get that is actually inside the door. There's no point in giving out and being outside the door and you've no chance of getting in. But if like a lot of people in RTE would start out as runners and like, okay, you might be making the tea, but you're still in the room, you know, and there's a good chance that you're going to get to, in the quieter times, chat to the producers, chat to the sub-editors, chat to the reporters, and they'll give you a heads up and say, here, go and chat to that lad or go and chat to her or, or do whatever it is. So get inside the door and then make your decisions. But just being able to say yes to something like that is good because trust me, there'll be a lot of no's as well and that is really hard. The last one, this is my last tip for you, coffee is still king. I know you might laugh and say, sure, it's the pandemic. God, we're looking, we're doing this on Zoom. The reality is at some point in the next year, we will all be vaccinated. We will be living normal life again. I would still say that being able to eyeball somebody and sit down across from them and ask them all the questions you want is the most informative thing that you can do. Because you can email people and they'll get back to you. Or you can say, would you mind, you know, giving me some advice and they'll do that. But actually the best way that you can get anything from people is actually to meet them. And there's a good chance that if they've met you, they're going to look out for you as well. So don't ever be afraid to reach out to somebody. Social media is great for this. And just be like, hi, I'm going to be in Dublin at the weekend. Would love. I'm going to be in RTE is there any chance I can meet you in the canteen for 10 minutes? Or, you know, like I'm in town, I'm across the road from Today FM. Is there any chance I could get five minutes of your time? I just want to uh, pick your brains for a couple of minutes. Generally, people are receptive. You know, they are like, and I, I do think people have realized with the pandemic in particular, that there's a lot of people struggling out there and a lot of people are going to be trying to fight and to get new things. So asking for, for coffee, is a really, really big one. So um, there are my tips. The last thing I want to do is I just want to show you what our um, bulletin looks like. So here is, this is last night's uh, running order from the six. So as you can see, this is, so this system that we use is called iNews. I don't know if some of you are familiar with it, if you've seen it um, or if you've use, used anything like this, but basically like this is what, everything that goes in here is sort of our scripts of what you see. So like this is our running order of who was in it, who wasn't. I'm just going to show you where we go in sport as well. So all of these were obviously, you saw the big story last night with the Super League, um, a breakaway from the Champions League. So there's a package, Tony O'Donoghue is there, and then there's a bit of a clip and then he's live. So there's a lot of that, but I'm just going to show you in some of these packages, even when you see the reports. So see this global there. So there's your lead in, which is uh, usually about 15 seconds. And then below that, there's your package. It's a minute 44 seconds. Search was a short read. And then again, rural, see that 139. So you'll see a lot of those. They're all around the same um, sort of uh, space. Like they're about that sort of minute minute and a half to uh, 90 seconds. And the last thing I'm just gonna show you, this is Colm Mungon's package last night. And again, there's no piece to camera in this because it is a foreign package, but what it will give you is a sense of how to use some good up sounds, how to write to pictures and what really works. Jackie, that's not playing there. You're not seeing it now. Sorry, Fergal. Did you? Can you see that? I'm not hearing you, Fergal. Sorry, Jackie. The the the, the screen is sharing fine. Just the embedded video doesn't seem to be playing for some reason. Not playing. Yeah. yeah, I'm assuming okay. everybody else is the same. Are you guys? Yeah, it's not yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's no Okay, do you know what? Here, listen, forget about it. Basically, the point is of his um, story in particular, he's very good, and a lot of them are, at trying to use the up sounds there as well. Um, so again, it's just like that sense of like, how do I find something that punctuates my story really well? And he's really good at doing that. So go back and watch it. It'll be on the RT player. You can watch some examples of that. But ones where you find the good and that sound is really good. Sorry, Jackie, what, 
what's that package called? And I'll, I'll, I'll share the link. I'll, uh, there's probably an individual link for it. Um, I think it was called Global. Um, I'll have and a look who's your there again? Column of Mongon. Mongon. Okay, you chat yeah. away there and, and I'll see if I can find it in the background. So if you, if you find it, it's at, it was at 26.10, 26 minutes in um, to the news last night. Um, but yeah, but look, anyway, look, it'll give you just a sense of what it's like. But um, I suppose guys in a lot of ways this is really about you so maybe hit me with questions whatever you think whatever you want to chat about um hopefully you got something out of some of those but um feel free to kind of come at me ask me whatever whatever you want whatever i can help with okay folks so if you could turn the cameras on it'd be great and uh yeah, just so. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard. It's it's hard presented into the 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 dead screen, isn't it, Jackie? Sometimes. Uh, so if you can uh -huh. turn the cameras on, and, um, yeah, put put up the hand or or just jump in uh, wherever needed. Okay. Uh, I suppose I'll I'll just jump in there. So, uh, would you recommend going abroad to gain experience at first, or do you think there's opportunities now in Ireland to start mm -hmm. off? With? Yeah, that's an interesting one, Aidan, right? So I loved my experience in America. And actually, I what I did was it was my it was kind of part of my third year co-op um, in Mary I. So it, we were allowed to do it. Like, I would love to say that there's opportunities to go directly, but I don't know if that still exists. Like for me, it was kind of very much a, I found my own route. My uncle knew somebody over there and I just kind of happened to get pretty lucky. But like what I loved about America was that it gave me the opportunity to go over there and learn away from the madness. Cause like here, sometimes in Ireland, I actually kind of think the best opportunities are in local radio, but not all of them are hiring. So sometimes it's like tricky. Whereas in my day, I was able to kind of go away and, and learn and come back. But like trying to get into RTE these days is tricky unless there's like a pathway there. So I think kind of the local radio is still definitely the best route but i think if you had an opportunity to go abroad like i personally would take it because i think in america as well like their their sort of ambition to allow you to do whatever you want was huge because like there's so many markets like do you know in ireland like it's like virgin media rte you've got air you know kind of still around in a sporting context but really other than that that's it like in tv whereas if you go to america like I was working in a market that was like market 150, like there's loads of TV stations over there. So um, it's kind of a long winded answer to your question. But like, I think if there's an opportunity and if, if you in, personally have an opportunity, I probably would take it. And I do think as well, this, I'll leave you on this, but the in RTE, sometimes the people who go away are viewed a little more fondly. I, I don't know if it's an Irish thing that we sort of think, you know, the foreign objects that, oh, they're fabulous because sure, she was in America, you know, she was a big dog in America and really you could have genuinely been over there making tea, but they don't need to know that, you know? So um, I, I, I do kind of think that the foreign experience is definitely good for you. Yeah, and just one more thing. Do you believe there's going to be more opportunities, I suppose, covering just covering sport in general with the rise of like the women's national team in football and the hockey team qualifying for the olympics do you think there's going to be more jobs in ireland in sport as a result of like the rise of women's sport yeah definitely like something had to give like the reality is when i started in rte we had the rights to the premiership the rugby all the soccer all the olympics everything but like you just see the way now like even with this breakaway super league it's just like money comes in and somebody's like bang, I'm buying that and this is going over here. I think now the real opportunity is with a lot of that. Like this weekend, I'm presenting TV coverage of the gymnastics European Championships. We never would have done that on TV, except now that we've got a guy in Reese McLennan who is a genuine Olympic medal contender. And I think our bosses have recognized oh, geez, we need to get on board with this. Same with the hockey. It was like, okay, God, this team are going places. We need to get on board with this. And I actually think it's cheaper for them to do that as well because like the rights for those haven't exploded yet. Even the women's Six Nations, we can still get it for a cheaper value than what we get the men's. And I'm not saying that that means that the product is cheaper. It just means that right now that's where the market is. I think there's huge value in all of the, the minority sports at the moment because 
first of all, there's definitely an appetite for that. The TV figures have shown that loads of people are watching them, which is great. And I do think that there's jobs there because somebody is going to broadcast it, even if it's not RTE, like TG Cahar and their commitment to sport and what they're doing. It's phenomenal. So like that's another one where there's loads of job opportunities. If I had Irish, I definitely would have went there as well, but I haven't a bar of it. Um, but like, I just think the opportunities are there and it's because there's so much sport. So yeah, definitely. I, I do really, really believe that there is going to be way more opportunities. That's great. Thanks, William. No problem. Yeah, I just might jump in there. Hi, Jackie. Where are you? Hi, Aoife. How are you? Not too bad. Um, I suppose just what is your favourite aspect of the job and has it changed much, I suppose, between COVID and your years in the industry now? Um, God, the, my favorite aspect is still being there genuinely. Like the reason I got into it is because I loved sport and I wanted to have a job that would allow me to get close to the action. So, um, doing this is really like, it sounds cliched, but it's like proper passion. Like I just, I love it. Like I really just love being at live sport and having that opportunity to kind of share that with people is, is incredible. It really is. So that hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is that I'm sitting here instead of being at it. Like, you know, it is a <laughs> dose, like, you know, like last year in 2020, I was at one game. I was at the ladies football final. And other than that, I was in studio for the whole thing. Now I would generally be at probably 30, 40 live matches, um, maybe more, maybe 50. And then to go from that to one was really hard. I mean, like, this is total first world problems. I don't want to sound like I'm whinging, but actually, <laughs> in reality, when your job is going to live sport and broadcasting that for people and suddenly you're being asked to do that from a studio, it just it is really challenging because you're not able to sort of share that with people. You're not able to kind of say, OK, look, this is this is why it's so important. And particularly last year with the GAA championships, because so many people couldn't go, I would have liked for us to be able to be there to kind of share the experiences of what people weren't seeing. But um, look, that's life, unfortunately. Hopefully we'll be back at it. But I do think that like for any of you, if if your passion is is really watching sport in particular, um, to get to it, is there's, there's nothing better. Uh, Carl, right, thanks, Million. Carl, um, jumping in there. Thanks for chatting to us this morning. But um, what's been the highlight, I suppose, looking back? Well, not looking back because you're still, I suppose, top of the game. But um, what's been your highlight so far? Uh, oh, there's a couple. Um, Katie Taylor winning the gold medal in 2012 at London. I was lucky enough to be working there for it. And it was just absolutely reckless. Like, honest to God, there was 9,000 people in the Excel Arena. I'm not joking when I say 8,000 of them were Irish. It was just, my mom was there, my sister was there, loads of my mates were there. And it was just, you were looking around the hall and it was just people singing the fields of Athen Rye and it was just chaos. Um, and then afterwards, because we kind of had this point where like we had an agreement with any person who won an Olympic medal that they had to go live onto RTE. And because I suppose I would know the family well, I had the responsibility of bringing them to the point. So I'm like running around afterwards trying to be like, Katie, Katie, come on, we have to get in the car. And like we were getting these like kind of um, I'm making it sound like it's very fancy, but like we had these <laughs> personal drivers taking us around and all she wanted to do was stop off at McDonald's. And I was like, Jesus Christ, here I'm going to be trying to pull the Olympic champion out of McDonald's, like to tell them that they have to be on RTE. I was like, you actually couldn't make it up. So that was um, that was really special. And then it's funny, the Olympics, even though I probably cover more GAA than anything else, the Olympics is, is really special to me. And I would know Gary and Paul O'Donovan. They're not from far from me at home. And when they won their Olympic medal, very quick, funny story. So we were sharing our building with AP, like huge American news agency, ABC from Australia and the BBC. We were sharing this big building in Rio and every day we'd come in and all the Americans would be talking about, oh guys, we had such a great day. We won like four medals and 15 top five finishes and all this. And we were like, oh yeah, sure. We were 20th in the marathon there and we were very good here and we had a few top tens and you know, whatever. But like it's Ireland, like we were very realistic about what we were, but every day they were all going on and on and on about how great they were. Anyway, as the Olympics went on, Gary and Paul O'Donovan were obviously gone viral. The whole world knew who they were, right? And so when they won the gold, or sorry, when they won the silver medal, there was a big parade, like everyone outside. It was wild over there because it was loads of Irish, right? So we're outside the building and I walk in and I said, oh, the lads are coming or whatever, you know? 
So anyway, we walk into the building and Gary and Paul O'Donovan are coming in behind us to go live onto the building. And honest to God, the Americans, the Australians, whatever, they literally turn around and their mouths are just on the floor. And they're like, you guys want a medal? And they're here. And I was like, oh, yeah. And they were like, how did you get them to come? And I was like, we asked them. And they were like, oh my God. And I was like, lads, I'm telling you, you can win a hundred medals, but you won't know them. Like the good chance in Ireland is that if somebody wins an Olympic medal, one of the team over there knows them personally. And there's a very good chance that you're going to get them to the point. So then they came in and all the two lads wanted was pizza. And we obviously had been aware of this because we had the Katie Taylor experience from a few years ago. So we had ordered pizzas and they were there. And so the Americans were all like, and like, how did you know the pizzas? And we were just like, oh, look, you know, like it's kind of an Olympic champion thing. They they get their cheat meal after they win or whatever. We just like to kind of treat them well. And they couldn't believe it. And then they all were like, can we interview them? Can we interview them? And I was like, well, you can in a minute, but his mom is coming in and his sister and his auntie and we're doing a live interview with them. And they were just like, honest, God, I think they thought we were mental. Like they were just like these Irish paddies. How in the name of Jesus are they bringing half the village up to the thing? But it was just what it was. It, it showed you that sometimes like in Ireland, I suppose, RTE is kind of still, you know, it's it's a big station and everybody in RTE knows what it is. But when you go across the world, nobody gives a hoot what RTE is until we walked in the door with the boys. And it was just, it was so funny. Like, it was honestly one of those moments that I will always remember because like Graham Norton couldn't even get them. And we had the whole family live on the six o'clock news. It was just brilliant. So uh, those are the moments that stand out though, because they're like, there are days as well that you're proud to be Irish. Like most of the days, Carl, you're there and like, like you're there to do a job, to report, to tell people what's happening. But like fundamentally in here, we're all Irish and you want Irish people to do well. So when that happens and you have a chance to have a front row seat, like there's just nothing beats that. That's that's the God's honest truth. Thank you. Great. I think Nikki, you're, you're up next. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Jackie. Um, hi. I actually have two questions. So first, sure. my first one is I actually um lose my voice a good bit as well and I actually did my co-op in Live 95 and that was like one thing that I found like um I don't know I just it happens and I just I suppose what was the most important thing that you like when you were learning about your voice and minding it and stuff because I think that's something that I've kind of um had to do as well what was the most important thing that you had to do to mind your voice or learn to do to mind your voice there, there's a couple of things first of all I found this amazing um tablets called vocal zone okay so you can get them in boots it comes in a purple um little pouch they're like these green little licorice um i was gonna call them tablets but they're like they're not like they're like, kind of like that soft jelly like a wine gum nearly right and you just suck them um lads i'm not joking when i say during the euros i had all of the pundits on them i was like <laughs> the vocal zone dealer like ray help to be coming to me before we go on the show will you give me one of them black yolks but it was just they were brilliant because they really clear your throat and i would recommend have a have them in your bag all the time because you never know let's just say you go away working on a tournament or you're away working on a news story for a week and you have to use your voice all the time, just keeping them, like I literally have a pack of them in my bag all the time. So definitely okay. do that. The second thing is I started steaming my voice actually. So when I went to a speech and language therapist, um, I wanted to get a sense of how do I get the most out of it. And so I like that now, I used to kind of get this pain because it was just like I was speaking out of the top end. I'm sure you're the same, Nikki, if it's like mm. you're speaking just out of the wrong piece yeah. of your throat. Um, so I started, you basically boil up the kettle, put the um, put your water into the pot and then basically get a tea towel, put your face over it and literally just breathe in through your mouth the whole way back and just breathe out and do that for five minutes. I used to start doing it before, let's just say if I was working Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I would probably do that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and then I'd be good. Yeah, I just, I really started getting into the habit of that. And it just opens your lungs a small bit. And I actually recommend even people who don't have um, vocal issues, it's just a really good um, sort of habit to get into because you're just clearing the your throat. Um, and again, like speaking out of the lower register of your voice really helps. You know, I know I was saying earlier about just trying to find the, the place that, that works for you, but a lower register is what's going to kind of give you a bit of longevity with your voice as well that's definitely something to work on it's not easy Nikki but like mm. I think putting time into it now 
like is going to help because like I'm 37 now I started doing that when I was probably 27 really just so that I knew that like I don't want to sound like like Marion Finucane was an idol of mine and I loved her but like she had said to me like she was and she did smoke about 40 major a day as well which probably didn't help but she would have said to me that she didn't look after her voice enough when she was young and then she really paid the price when when she was mm. older so I would say start looking after it now for sure okay cool thank you and my second question is um what do you think is the most important thing to put forward about yourself when you're like going for a job or like putting yourself forward for an opportunity and um, what do you think is the most important thing to portray I think your personality generally like I, I do think when it comes to the media people want to hire people that they like because it's one of those industries where particularly in Ireland like even that story that I told you about Gary and Paul O'Donovan the crucial part of that there is the relationship so like being able to know that you're looking across the room and I trust that person like you know if I see Brian Dobson on the news I know I trust him because he's got that sort of aura about him but it's built on relationships that's what it is so I think for you if you're going into a job it's a that willingness to I will do anything you want I will sweep the floors I will literally run around after you if that's what it means because someday I'm going to be at the top but right now I'm willing to start at the bottom so it's definitely that and it's also just being able to say that openly have a decent relationship with someone where you're open you're honest and you're very likable um, because I do think you know in the media it's a very small industry as well like I'm sure Fergal will tell you that like even just even when people leave the mainstream media and they go and work and do something else, it's generally the same bubble of people that are working. And if you meet someone on the way up and they're really shitty to you, you will remember that, you know. So I just think trying to have a decent relationship with the people in the media really, really helps. And so starting out on the right foot is crucially important. OK, perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. Um Jackie, if I could just come in very quickly on just one sure. uh, small thing. Um, uh, just you mentioned about the coffee, you know, making for, for a coffee and uh, like for for a, a lot of the students here. And I think COVID really accentuates that. But the, the fact of maybe being Limerick or Cork, that can be quite hard for them to like, like, do you have any because because you're not like inner sanctum D D4. That's not your background. So like. Like, how do you get past that 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 geographical detachment sometimes from where all the action seems to be, i.e., in Dublin or in in South Dublin specifically? And uh, like, how do you, you know? What, yeah, that's that, that is tricky. But like, let's just say if you're from Cork, like go and meet Pascal Sheehy or go and meet Jenny O'Sullivan like their sound like the reality is and I know it's funny because like obviously I live in Dublin like I literally live down the road from RTE I couldn't be further from Dublin for like I am a complete bogger I have no um in like I have two children who are now from South County Dublin and I can barely stand the sight of them like the sounds that are coming out of their mouths it is just hilarious because I'm not that's not me but equally I understand that this is the hope this is where it all happens like Joe Stack that works with me actually moved back to Kerry because he didn't want to be living in South County Dublin because he couldn't handle it. But that is, again, Joe is like me. He's total country folk. But he would be in the same vintage of reach out to the people who are like you. So, you know, scale, look, look across the landscape, right? And let's just say... Like Mirren O'Connell, who presents the Six O'Clock Show on Virgin Media, is a very good friend of mine. She worked in Live 95 with me as well. And both of us totally came to Dublin on a whim. I had five minutes of television. She had a three minute bulletin and we used to drive up and down. But eventually I was like, OK, I need to meet people like I can't do five minutes forever. So I just started reaching out to people. I sent loads of emails. I emailed Ryle Nugent and he met me. And again, Ryle is the antithesis of what I am. Like he is Mr. Dublin Four, and I was total Cork culture. But I think he recognised, OK, we need to broaden our landscape as well. And I do think the Irish media landscape has a touch of that as well. So I, I wouldn't be afraid to kind of say, look, I'm, I'm based in Limerick or Cork or Waterford or whatever it is, and here's what I can do. Crucially as well, Fergal, I think now that people can broadcast from their houses, it's funnily enough actually opened up a way for you to skip through all that and actually say, do you know what? I don't need to be in Dublin. I can actually cover everything that you want from here. So let's just say it's like, for instance, we don't go to Munster Rugby as much as we used to because 
people don't want to pay the travel costs. They don't want to pay a cameraman to go all the way down. So we have Jim Wilde, who is a cameraman based in Limerick. He often goes, but there might not be a reporter. But if you're a reporter who's a freelancer down that end of the country, you could be like, I'll go and I'll be the reporter. I'm happy to ask questions. And then the cameraman can bring back the, the disc. But it's actually about putting yourself out there and seeing what's in my area. So if I am a news reporter and I live in the heartbeat of Kilkenny, look around. What are the news stories that I'm seeing? What can I make my patch? Like Greg Allen that works with me recognized that there was uh, an opportunity in athletics because it was around the time when Sonia O'Sullivan was becoming really prominent and there was nobody covering athletics. So he was like, I'm going to make myself the most studious athletics commentator that is out there and he did that same with golf it was around the time Patrick Harrington was obviously coming through and he identified that there was a space in the market and went for it and like going back to Aidan's point earlier on about like you know now that there's more like minority sports and female sports coming through making yourself an expert in those kind of things could actually be really helpful if, if it's sport that you're interested in because there's going to come a time when we need more and more people doing that particularly in like this year we've got olympics euros you know there's loads of stuff happening um so i think look the coffee thing not to oversimplify it but there is absolutely nothing wrong with sending an email to somebody in rte and saying hi there um, I'm up in Dublin in May and I am doing, okay, obviously not now, COVID is kind of mad, but like I am up in Dublin, I'm in, I'm doing a, an internship in town, I'm in Boston College doing this and I would love to sit down for 10 minutes with you. I'm here between Wednesday and Friday, the 5th to the 6th, whatever. And if you have any time, we'd love to have a quick chat. If they don't get back to you, they don't get back to you. But like at the end of the day, I kind of think that's as much on them. Like I would never be afraid of sending an email before. I think when I was younger, I was probably like, oh, what if they don't write back? Or what if I'm annoying them or whatever? At the end of the day, these people are probably getting emails from loads of other people. So why wouldn't you take the opportunity to email them? Like, and, it, it, and like also timing is everything. So sometimes it's about catching people on the right day. So for instance, like weekends, like people are all over the place because they're either working or they're not working and they're with their family. But like Tuesdays are a good day because people tend to be, they've cleared all their emails on a Monday and Tuesday is a good day to reach out to them. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, people tend to have a lot more time on their hands on Tuesdays and Wednesdays than they do on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So um bear those things in mind but i do think making yourself available and kind of saying that you're willing to come to them you're willing to do anything you just want five minutes i don't want long um it just gives people a chance to see you because like it, it's kind of Fergal, like what i was saying earlier about just having those relationships with people the more that they meet you the better chance they have of recommending you to someone else whereas if you're just an email they don't know you they can't stand over that whereas if i've eyeballed you and i've met you for coffee like i had a guy a couple of years ago who interviewed me for a thesis he was doing. And I said to him, here, come in to RTE and have coffee. And he was like, oh, geez, that'd be great. And we did the interview in there and I just gave him a little walk around or whatever. And he was really interesting guy, but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't meet him, he could have just been a, you know. And actually at the end of it, I said to one of our producers, like that lad has a bit about him. He was good, you know, I said, let's let's bring him in and see if he wants to shadow us some Sunday and he ended up coming in and getting a bit of work and now he's producing in Radio Nova but it was purely because he took the chance he reached out he was a smart guy and he took an opportunity but like he wasn't reaching out to me because he was looking for a job he was just saying Ira listen could you help me so um, again very long-winded way of saying do it because what is the worst thing that can happen somebody saying no to you is not a bad thing it's just them being an arse and not responding. But I, I genuinely think you should take the opportunity and reach out to as many people as you can. Okay, um, so that's that's great. I think, I, I don't think, one final question before we wrap up, if, if there's anybody there, but I, I think. I, oh, I, I just, can I just add, to touch on what you touched on there by mm -hmm. saying like, you don't really have to live in Dublin now. Like I'm a bogger from Waterford, I suppose, another culture. So. Like the the thought of like having to move up to Dublin because that's where all the big media corporations are. Is that not are the employers still not going to want you to live in Dublin? Well, what do you want to do, Aidan? Do you want to be in news or sport or what do you want to do? Sport. 
yeah, well, sport, like, look where you are. Like, Jesus, in Waterford, look around you. Like, you've got a hurling team who are on the verge of winning in All-Ireland if they can get themselves together, right? You have got a rugby team literally down the road that is a global brand. So I would say to you, find a way to create stories for yourself there. Like, just looking around your environment, it's like you've got a soccer team there. You you know, you've got so much happening. Like, even in WIT, there's a broadcasting studio in WIT. So, like trying to say, OK, let me look around my environment. What's within an hour of me that I could get to quickly? If I got a phone call from RTE to say we need somebody to cover X, Y, Z, you could get to Kilkenny, you could get to Carlo. Rachel Blackmore is living in Carlo. She's one of the biggest stars in Ireland at the moment. Could I go and get an interview with Rachel Blackmore? You know, so it's about kind of looking at your landscape and using it. I would often say to some of my colleagues, like so like Darren Freckle that presents Sunday Sport with me, he lives in Galway. Joe Stack lives in Listowel, which is like three hours from Dublin. Um, like we, I, I myself, I'm not this year because I'm supposed to be going to Tokyo. If if it happens, if everything happens, if we get a vaccine, all that. Um, I will be in Ballybunion for the summer. Otherwise, like I live down there, we rent a house for the summer, and I'll broadcast from there. Like this that I'm talking to you on, I self-edit. So I'll record my packages here in my kitchen and edit them and send them in. So like, I don't have to be in Dublin. I think from your point of view, I know you're saying like, maybe I to, to make the break, I need to go there. But I just, I really think if you can find a niche for yourself where you are and build a network of people who you like, and that starts by you going to matches. So if you start going to the Waterford Hurling matches, you know the PRO, you know everybody, you can get information. You can send in reports that RTE will use because you were there. Like the reality is, we're not sending people to all these games. So I think finding a way for you to broadcast yourself from where you are, I'd be all over that. And then if that doesn't work and then you need to come to Dublin, I would do that. But I would try to make the best of what you have. Because like, you know yourself, coming to Dublin, if you're coming to Dublin and you're making 20 grand a year, you can't afford to live here. Like, you know, like that's the reality. It's just it's ridiculous. But like that's unfortunately, that's kind of the way things are at the moment. So I do think if you could say, look, I am going to in 2022, I am going to commit to going to one Waterford United game, one Munster rugby game, one Waterford hurling game over the next kind of month period. I am going to rotate. I'm going to go to all of them. I'm going to get to know everybody in the club and then I'm going to make that my beat. That that would probably be what I would do if I was in your position. Thanks, million. Yeah, no problem. OK, guys. Um... That's I. I think uh, we, we, we'll we'll wrap it up there. Uh, just want to say thanks, thanks so much, Jackie, for your time. Uh, her um, J- Jackie's enthusiasm and energy. This is this is the last week, uh, everybody. This is week twelve, Jackie. So this was oh a, wow, Jesus. a great little a great little pep at this stage because everybody's kind of running on empty a bit at this point. But uh, yeah. it's, oh, it's been uh, tough, I'd say. Like, has it been like you know? I I actually genuinely have sympathy for you because I think it's. Um, Whatever about us and our jobs and whatever, it's actually just for you guys trying to be on Zoom and, you know, it's, geez, it's hard, like. Uh, yeah, no, they're, <laughs> they, they, they've struggled the Pearl Devils, but they, 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 they've dealt with it bravely. Uh, they, 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 no, they, they, there's a, a super group of people here um, coming from the MA in the fourth year, so, um no, it, it only gets better, doesn't it? Uh, it does, yeah. And look, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully we're we're coming out the other side of it. So um, good luck to all of you. I hope it is uh, a bit easier in person um, from here on in. The other thing I would say, lads, is um, keep in touch. You know, like like I said at the start, everybody is in the media. Most, most people are sound. Um, my email is just jackie.hurley at rte.ie. Um, don't be afraid to reach out if there's something I can help with or if there's something you want to send me or, you know, if you're in Dublin and you want to meet me for a coffee, there's no bother. Um, just reach out. There's there's never an issue. Okay. 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 Br- brilliant. Look, th- th- thanks so much for your time today, Jackie. Really enjoyed that. And um, all right. So uh, in- enjoy the rest of the day. Th- thanks a minute, Jackie. No problem. Take care, guys. See okay. you later. Brilliant.